take for you. If you are someone who is able to access enough food to be obese or morbidly obese, you have privilege. I know. Oh, fuck. Oh my God. Hot take. Basically, this girl's whole entire video was just saying, well, if you can afford to eat so much that you're going to be obese, then that means that you're privileged because a lot of people can't afford to eat food and a lot of people are starving. True facts. I know that here in America, we have this weird like hyper fixation on being a victim consistently and that somehow somebody saying that if you eat too much, you are actually in a privileged category and somehow you automatically confirm like most of these people will literally always go to how can I be privileged? I'm literally always oppressed, which is obvious because these people want to be oppressed very, very badly. They're literally trying to find reasons to be oppressed because a lot of value in being a victim nowadays because somebody can like lift you up or feel bad for you and you get sympathy points for that. Um, it's okay to acknowledge that we live in a great country and also a great time to be alive where food is relatively cheap and relatively accessible. Like there are a lot of countries in the world where people don't have the ability to just go down to the street and just buy whatever they want at a McDonald's or even at a grocery store whenever they want to. Like that is an anomaly. We live in a, the, one of the greatest, I would say the greatest time to be alive in one of the greatest countries, if not the greatest country. Uh, so when you sit there and you say things like, uh, how can this be privileged or like whatever argument that she's going to come up with? That's crazy. How can you even think that that is a incorrect statement in general? You are privileged, dude. You are so privileged because you're in a country where you're literally being taken care of. Okay. Like you literally have accessibility devices where you can even facilitate being that type of weight. That's crazy, bro. Isn't that insane? You're so fat and you manage to maintain that weight, by the way. If you weigh 300, 400, 500 pounds, maintaining that weight is an anomalistic thing. You're eating so many calories in a day to maintain that particular type of weight. And you can also exist in society. That's crazy, bro. That's actually insane. But I'm interested in seeing how this person is going to justify that uh, because it's a very true statement. I will also, before we start the video any further, compliment this individual on their outrageously amazing thick eyebrows. Then that means that you're privileged because a lot of people can't afford to eat food and a lot of people are starving. And you know what's so funny about that is number one, genetics, number two, food deserts, number three, cost of groceries versus cost of fast food ties back into food deserts. So, so almost everything that she just said right there is just wrong, okay? So like genetics off that point right there, just talking about genetics alone, I don't even, you can't just say genetics and just uh, automatically imply. I know she's gonna go into reasons here, but there is nothing about your genetics that determine you to be 300 pounds. I don't know why people are so hooked on a feeling when it comes to that particular point. It's a very, da it's a very bad point to, uh, to hook on. You're, I don't know why these people wanna die on that hill. Uh, why would you think genetics? Like what, what about genetics? Like, am I just born out of the wound a 400, 400 500 pound person? No, there's nothing about my genetics that are gonna do that. If you weigh like over 200 pounds, you're doing extreme things to maintain that particular type of weight, okay? Like it's obvious. Now granted, we have a lot of high calorie foods that are not exactly high in density. So like when you eat them, you don't feel very, very like, you're, you're not satiating your hunger. So I'll give you an example. Like if you're drinking Coca-Cola, there's a lot of calories in that Coke or soda in general because it's just syrup. It's just syrup, sugar, and all this other stuff, right? So when you drink it down, you feel like you just drank nothing, but in reality, you probably just drink like 160 calories. That's a lot of calories, especially if you're a woman and you're like five foot four and you only need 2,000 calories in a day or less. So you just basically took like a tenth of your calories, threw it down the fucking drain, and you didn't even realize that. Same thing with coffee, same thing with like fast food places, same thing with chips. So it is all this other stuff that's very easy to consume a lot of calories without even realizing. A lot of people manage to drink away their entire calories in one day. People that go out to drink don't even realize that they're, they're literally drinking away hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of calories, sometimes even upwards of a thousand calories if you're an alcoholic in some cases. So that doesn't make any sense. Um, if you're genetically predisposed for being fat, I don't understand what you mean by that. Like I just got the bad draw because my dad and my mom were fat. What if my dad and my mom are not fat? How does this work exactly? I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. It's a non-point. The food desert argument also doesn't make any sense because if you actually look into some of this research, most of the shit confirms what I believe, which is most of the people that are in these food deserts, even if you give them positions to where they can get the food and its accessibility uh, or low income neighborhoods or whatever, where they have the options to get foods, they, they open up these supermarkets with uh, low cost foods and the same foods of these middle class or upper class people. It turns out that most of these people still have poor diets. So yes, 
I will agree that if it's harder for you to get good quality food, it will be harder for you to maintain a good diet. But even when you're in positions to have this stuff, that doesn't significantly increase the diet in any way. So even on this point, the food desert argument, that doesn't even make sense. If you want to talk about food deserts, it's less about the accessibility to the food and more about what the individual's choices are, are, are more like. Like, I'll give you a really good example. When I grew up, I grew up eating bologna and cheese sandwiches and pork and beans, right? I ate that shit almost every week. And, you know, spaghetti and eggs and shit like that. Uh, as, as an adult, I still go back to these foods because they're nostalgic for me. And a lot of people will eat just straight up hogwash because they grew up with that type of food. And it's all about your cultural background. It's all about where you're from. It's all about like, you know, what type of, what type of schools you went to. Like all this stuff is going to ship this, all this stuff is going to shape the way you eat food and how you navigate the world. So it's less about the accessibility to the food and more about the individual's choice on making the proper dietary decisions. And you can look this up. This is proof. Like most of the time when you're talking about food deserts, they do not increase. If you put a supermarket right, right in the direct wherever, like all these people need food, you'll find that the, the dietary decisions of these people don't drastically increase. They just don't. Maybe upwards of like 10% at most, but that's it. So that doesn't make any sense. And if this whole entire argument is about food deserts, then this person is dumb because it seems like they haven't done any research on this at all. So let's talk about some numbers. So I'm gonna show you two maps. This is the first map, this is a food desert map, okay? So no car and no supermarket store within a mile. So as you can see, like up here, like California, Colorado, Utah, Washington, these areas, not really a thing, but then you get down to the south and it's very, very red. It's mainly food deserts, okay? And now, oh, oh! This is, this is a map showing obesity from 2019 to 2021 in America. Oh, do we see a correlation? It's almost like when people don't have access to organic health food grocery stores. I think a lot of these people don't realize that even if you have access to organic foods or whatever they, like a lot of people just tend, a lot of people just tend to think if you eat healthy foods, AKA organic or whole foods, somehow that automatically means that you're gonna be healthy. That's not how that works. You can be healthy. You can be relatively healthy eating trash foods, even if you wanted to. Like I know several people that are like literally, uh, you know, bags of muscle, big, beautiful men that eat Wendy's consistently, okay? It just depends on what you're putting in your body. So even if you're somebody that is in a position to get these whole foods, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're healthy. It just means that you have access to these things that are maybe probably better for you. So even in these scenarios, like I get what she's saying. Like I do agree if when you're in a position where you don't have a car and you don't have transportation and you can't get to a grocery store, it's gonna be harder for you to acquire good wholesome foods. You're probably gonna have an increased chance of being obese because more than likely, you're going to find yourself in places like McDonald's or fast food places or convenience stores or wherever where they don't have good wholesome foods because they just can't. How the fuck is a, a, a bodega on the corner of the street with a Puerto Rican guy behind the counter manning literally the entire store going to have like cucumbers, vegetables, bananas, and things such and so forth on the shelves because that's just going to expire in two days. So he's not going to be able to have that stuff on the shelf. I agree. But from the research that I've done, it doesn't increase any significant value. Most of the time, these people have to make their own decisions when it comes to that stuff. I grew up in a quote unquote food desert. I would literally have to travel by bus in most of these places when I was growing up to get these, these particular food items, right? I literally remember when I was like maybe less than five years old having to take the bus with my family because we didn't have a car. Grew up in the project, right? And we would have to travel literally two or three miles to a grocery store and then travel back or wherever we can carry because there was no car, there was no transportation like that we had. So we had to rely on the public transportation and we still made it work. A lot of times it just comes down to the individual's choice. And I really hate when so many people look at like, oh, it's systemic. It's it's an issue with the, it's an issue with society that puts people in these bad positions. And I agree that there are issues in society that do hold people back, okay? I agree with that. I'm not one of these people that's going to sit there and tell you that, you know, like, oh, you know, depending so much of you, so much who, of who you are is literally just determined on luck, pure luck. That could just be whether or not you grew up in a single, like a single mother household, or it could be that if, did you, did you not have a good family structure? Do you have people that encourage you to go to school? Did you have people that are encouraging you to pursue extracurricular activity? Did you have people that encourage you to get a job? Do you have people that encourage you to go to secondary school? Like did, all of this stuff is literally nothing within your grasp. Like you don't have control over any of that stuff. And that can really shape the person that you are when you get older. So one of the reasons why a lot of people are fat is because they grew up in an environment where nobody encouraged them to not be fat. And they probably actively, passively encourage people just to be fat through the process of just letting that person eat whatever they want and never saying anything about it. So I'll, so much of your value is determined by things that you just do not have control over. And this could just be where you're from, I agree. But 
to sit there and take away all accountability from people because you grew up in a bad area is disingenuous. It's just terrible, dude. Because here where we live in America, right? There's we live in the the the, the, the actual land of opportunity, dude. And if you want to sit there and you want to keep telling people, no, it's not your fault, no, it's not your fault, no, it's not your fault, you're actively taking away their ability to make decisions because you keep telling them that it's not it's it's not their fault. That's it's society. And what what do we do in this scenario if it's society? If it if it's the 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 entire government or our like entire landscape of our society is the problem? What do we do? What are we supposed to go to Congress or picket fence and tell them that they need to change shit? That's never gonna happen. That's, and if it does happen, we're not gonna see in our lifetime and if we do see it in our lifetime it's going to be like years and years and decades in the future wouldn't it be better instead of saying that to sit there and go hey you have an issue with your diet you have an issue with finances you have an issue buying fast food and all that stuff how about we sit down we budget out a plan let's count our calories that's the first thing that you do when you get anybody to lose weight is you count calories right everybody knows that how about we put it on the person how about we put it on the individual because at least that person can make their own decisions rather than just saying it's not your fault because society is doing it to you at that point you can't do anything because you're literally taking away their own accountability and putting it on society so it's a terrible way of looking at it and an abundance of choices of supermarkets where there's places where there's no sprouts and no whole foods and no anything like that yeah this person is obvious super ignorant on this shit like uh, it's super ignorant on nutrition in general whole foods don't automatically mean healthy it's mainly just fast food like kfc and maybe a mcdonald's and a taco bell and that's mainly what's in their tiny little town it's almost like that that makes obesity rates higher and it's almost like that doesn't mean they're privileged. It means that that's the only food they have access to because they live in a fucking food desert. So most of these, okay. So this entire argument literally binges on the fact that somebody has no accountability because they live in an area where they are not able to acquire a particular food, which by the way, most food places nowadays, I don't know where you guys live, but I don't live next to a Walmart. I live very, very far from a Walmart and you can get food delivered for $15, okay? Uh, there is a tip if you have to tip the person, um, but most people can get the food delivered to them if they don't have the option to travel to a a grocery store I've done it before I've done it from stop a shop I've done it from star market I've done it from Walmart like plenty of places will literally deliver to you and yes there is an increased cost of that but then again you don't have a car so it is what it is right you're gonna have to give and take some particular way or you can walk to these establishments or you can I don't know get a taxi get an uber there are plenty of options that somebody can pursue in order to acquire food that they need and I understand what this person is saying but it's just incredibly it's such a cope to sit there and say that you're 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 taking away so much of that person's ability to do something about it and just saying they can't do anything about it because they're in a position where they can't that doesn't you can't you can't keep doing that you're taking away that person's entire accountability not to mention that obesity is oftentimes directly related to genetic conditions. Please, okay, what are genetic conditions? Please enlighten us. Like autoimmune diseases, PCOS. Yeah, so most of the time when somebody is fat, this is just crazy, it's just a major cope. Most of the time when somebody is fat, the reason why they're fat is because they're eating too much. And I love it when these people sit there and say PCOS or autoimmune or whatever, genetic these genetic conditions, right? Uh, that is not most fat people and whenever somebody you have to really you have to really think about when people say this shit Okay, it's, it's not about it's not so much about what they're saying It's more about what they're not saying Okay, so when you're when you're sitting here and you're labeling out all these problems and you're not looking at the the biggest reason The, the main reason why somebody is fat, which is what lack of diet lack of exercise that is the main reason if you really wanted to get your health down pack you do those two things okay in that order diet and exercise and these people sitting there and they're saying no it's not their fault because of genetics or food deserts that's them basically saying they are they are suffering from things that they cannot control even though we know the majority reason why somebody is fat is because of these two things you're not thinking you're not talking about the number one cause of these issues and it's it, you're going to these extreme measures to try to make it seem like these people are victims you're actively making these people's lives worse through the process of trying to make their lives better you're not the hero in this situation you're actually the villain think about how think about the circumstances that you're putting these people in you're just basically telling them there's nothing they can do they're just fucked so that person's gonna watch this video and go i knew it i'm fucked i'm just gonna sit here order my uber eats and just be done or uh, one of the things i really love these people say is like they don't have the opportunity to cook they don't have the opportunity to meal prep they don't have a you can't sit down 
for 20 minutes out of your day and make a sandwich for lunch for your for your job. You can't do that. That's ridiculous. I don't care what anybody says. You have time. You know you have time. Anybody that goes to KFC, anybody that eats at McDonald's, you can go in and do that. I don't have a problem with people eating at fast food, right? The issue is you're using that as an excuse. You're sitting there and you're saying, I don't have time to make this food. You're fucking lying, bro. What are you talking about? What is your entire 24 hours being taken up by sleep and work? That's ridiculous, dude. You have time to sit at your table, put a sandwich together, make some meals together. God forbid you have children with this type of ideology, bro. Oh my God. No, you can 100% sit down and create meals. That's that's just, that's just a straight fallacy, bro. Like these people are literally taking away all your accountability. It's like somebody that's sitting here. Like how many people do I know that are in low income situations and they always have the they always have the newest iPhone. They always have the, the newest game system. They always have the newest everything, right? They're consistently doing shit with their money that they shouldn't be doing. And I always they always have problems with their cash, right? They're buying weed, they're buying drugs, they're buying alcohol, they're buying iPhones, whatever the fuck. And they always have money, money issues by the end of the month. You know why? Because you're spending all your money on bullshit, dude. And you know, it's very easy for that person to go, the reason why I don't have a lot of money is because I'm in an environment where society is holding me back. Society is making things cost more money. Society is doing this. No, bro. It's because you're fucking signed up for four different subscription services and you have five phone lines and you're perpetually in debt because you never pay back your bills. That's your problem, dude. And it sucks so much ass that I see people like this getting such good reception because they want to sit there and they want to blame it on society, which is the easy thing to do. When you externalize all of your problems, you get rid of your own issues. You no longer have to worry about the problem yourself because you're putting it upon somebody else. That's easy. These people will sit there and say it's the hardest thing in the world to acknowledge that it's society holding me back. No, it's not. That's the easiest thing to do. You're literally externalizing your problem. It's the harder thing to look in the mirror and realize, wait a minute, maybe there's something that I can do. Maybe there's something that I can do to make my situation better instead of sitting here and telling everybody else, no, it's not my fault. It is your fault. Just take some accountability. Jesus Christ. This person is literally fucking dumb oftentimes directly related to genetic conditions like autoimmune diseases, PCOS, or even disabilities. And oftentimes obesity runs rampant in areas where there is poor access to health care and Americans are uninsured, which, wait, let's look at a map for that too. Oh, oh, wait, notice how um, access to care, lowest being blue, is in the same exact area where there is food deserts and high obesity rates. Great. Do you see the correlation? Do you see how it's not... All I see is you forgiving bad at all I see is you forgiving bad uh, bad activity, dude. You're not actually trying to you're not actually trying to solve the problem. You're just trying to win a point. And you know what? If people want to listen to this shit, they can go and listen to it. It seems like she's getting good reception from it. But I just want everybody to know this is all bullshit. Oh, you're privileged because you just eat fast food all the time. Do you see that? Do do I have to like make it any more clear for you? Why do we get on this app once a week and have discourse about fat people? Why is that a thing? I'm fucking sick of it. You're doing it as well. So if you're sick of it, then why are you contributing to it? That makes no sense. But anyway, this person makes no sense. I'm open to I'm open to a debate with this individual if they ever want to talk about it. Um, it seems like they have no idea what they're talking about. They can pull up a few Google image searches of whatever they're talking about and try to make it seem like it's a good point. It's not. Um, but regardless, the eyebrows are amazing. I'm so All right. Insecurities versus systemic oppression. I'm Kayla, your fat positive therapist, and let's get into it. So I've gotten in trouble with this before where I have challenged someone who was having who, a thin bodied person for having an insecurity publicly and how it could do harm to the fat community. And what a lot of people missed in that conversation was the nuance that you can have insecurities. You could be the most privileged human in the world and have insecurities. In fact, all of us do because the society that we live in has forced us all into insecurities because it's a very it's a very bizarre way of looking at insecurities. You're basically saying the reason why every so the reason why everybody has insecurities is because society at some point okay, I mean it, it makes sense in a very general way. Like there is a expectation of how human beings should act and if you do not act within those expectations, you're probably going to be insecure because of that. But there are a lot of expectations that are pretty good, like not murdering people and things such and so forth. There's probably a reason why a lot of those standards are in place, if that makes any sense. So if your argument is one of the standards that a society has is probably should not be obese because being obese leads to a lot of medical issues, right? There's a lot of comorbidities. There's a lot of problems associated with being fat and this is probably a good standard. And now if you're going to sit here and try to argue that this is not a good standard because it causes insecurity, suck me off. That is a terrible way of looking at anything in life because I could say the same thing about murder. Well, I want to murder five people, but society tells me not to. So I'm just really insecure about that. 
There, there is no reason why somebody should be fat. I mean, it's fine if you want to be fat. I encourage your decision to be fat. Obviously, go ahead and do it. But I don't think it's a good idea. You're literally just living your life on hard mode. You're literally just having more and more issues. And if you're in one of these brackets of people that literally is in the the the, the business of constantly forgiving your bad your bad information, your bad lifestyle, and blaming it on society, you're literally not doing anything to help your situation. You're just perpetually making your ass, you're making your life more ass, and you're blaming it on everybody else. So, I mean, if that's what you want to do, you can go ahead, but you're never going to actually be get better. It wants to sell us products, and it wants to create a social hierarchy, right? Insecurities are different than systemic oppression, right? So, you can hate the way your stomach looks, but... You might always fit in an airplane seat. You may dislike how your hair looks, but you'll always get appropriate medical care, right? So there's a huge difference and people are wanting more discussion about the systemic oppression issue than the individual I don't like myself issue. It's completely okay in, in your world. I work a lot within clients processing their body issues and I am happy to do it because that's what I'm there for in that moment. Find the people to process that with, but also be aware that our, our insecurities are a product of a systemic oppression system that is hurting communities, that is killing communities, especially communities that are in larger bodies, uh, black bodies, indigenous bodies. You just start naming off random minority groups and then go, this is the reason. It's bad because minorities have issues with it. Therefore, we are minorities too, right? Fat people are also black people and indigenous people and I guess Asian guys too. Maybe it depends on which Asian guy you're talking about though. Maybe like Indonesians, but not Chinese guys. Chinese guys have a little bit too good. Let's not talk about those guys, right? No, it's all it see all it seems is like okay, find a group. What I'm basically hearing from this person is find a group that's gonna reconfirm your own biases so you can talk about these problems that are obviously your own problems. And but you're gonna find a group that's gonna tell you that they're not your problems because that's a way easier cope than looking in the mirror and solving your own issue. Because that at that point you're actually gonna have to do something about it. If you can acknowledge it as your problem, then you actually have to do something about it. Otherwise, you're just gonna acknowledge the fact that you're just inadequate perpetually. Uh, or you could just say, it's not my fault, it's society. It's the man, bro. It's the government. It's hashtag Joe Biden or whoever wins the presidential election. It doesn't matter. The point I'm making is these people have a tendency of literally forgiving their own bad activities and throwing it on everybody else. I don't know why they always, I don't know why they always do this. I mean, I do know why. It's because it's easier to do that than the other thing, which is actually work on yourself. So where we want to hold space for the insecurity of not liking ourselves, someone else is having to hold space to not getting the human rights. Like what? Can you name it? Like, what are you talking about exactly? When you say human rights, are you literally just saying like benches don't fit you? Are you just talking about lack of elevator access because maybe the elevator just broke down in that particular building and they don't have the ability to get it fixed right away? What are you talking about exactly when you say human rights? Because it's very, very weird for somebody to say human rights in the realm of being fat when being fat is literally just up to you. And sure, like that person just said before this, there are plenty of reasons why somebody can be fat for not their fault. And that's true. There are plenty of reasons why somebody could be fat and not their fault. But the majority of the reasons why people are fat are because they did it to themselves and they chose to be fat. They're continuing to be fat and they're doing nothing about it because they're content living their life the way that they are. You can't reap what you sow and then complain about it. You're doing this particular activity. That's like going down the street, stabbing somebody, and then a cop comes up to you, you're going to jail. And you go, why? This is systemic oppression. Yeah, no fucking shit. You can't do something extreme and then be upset that there are repercussions to that particular activity. That doesn't make any sense. You're doing something very, very extreme here. And these ideologies are actually terrible. These are very extremist ideologies. These people are just saying in a very nice way to make it seem like they're not saying anything weird or crazy. They are. They're saying something very upsetting. These words that they're espousing out of their mouth right now, they may come off really nice and delicate and awesome. But make no mistake about it. These are really, really crazy words, bro. These people actively want you to suffer for the rest of your life because guess what? It helps them in their conquest of just never taking accountability. So if, you know, a couple eggs get cracked and the, and the consequence of that, oh, well, it is what it is. Right. Um, again, you can have those insecurities. They're insanely valid to your personal experience, but you have them because of a system that's put in place. It just depends on what these insecurities are. You can't just directly say the reason why all insecurities exist is because this because society says this. I, it's, it's too easy for you to do that. Sometimes insecurities are valid. Like for instance, when you're walking down the street and you're out of breath and you have to stop and literally put your hands on your knees and go, oh damn, I just walked 10 steps. 
and you feel insecure about that, you probably should because guess what? That's not something that's supposed to happen. You're a human being. Our entire structure is determined, our, our entire structure is facilitated on walking long distances and you can't even walk 10 steps. You should feel insecure about that. That's not a good thing. That is a terrible thing. Thing, okay, or when you're on dating apps and your gut is out and you're upset that girls aren't harding you back Guess what? You're unattractive, bro. You have your gut hanging out. It's not attractive for many women or many people in general so Sometimes these insecurities are you are you are your body's way or like your brain's way of telling you subconsciously This is an issue. You need to solve this problem, dude Not all insecurities are bad things They're just things that you need to adjust and guess what sometimes you have insecurities like for instance If your arm is missing and you just don't have an arm anymore because something happened and you're insecure about that It's okay. You have to acknowledge that this is something that's happened to you It's nothing you can do about it. It is what it is. That's fine. These insecurities are fine But when it comes to insecurities like this like being fat or not being able to walk upstairs or whatever she's talking about they might be valid and it's something to think about personally to for capitalism of course yeah definitely capitalism definitely anytime anytime you think that you're about to lose just say capitalism system that's put in place to for capitalism i would love to know what they think about like other countries that don't operate within the capitalistic structure i mean to a certain degree or one degree or another most most economies do run off capitalism even like the most communist structure will have some forms of capitalism but like if you go to countries like china do you think that they're like really okay with fat people like you think that's fine you think that there are a lot of fat people you think that people can be fat you think they encourage that like you you do you think that that's like Thing? you think that's a thing because i'm probably no right like the you think the, the the communist country of china does not encourage that they don't like that at all so maybe you're so quick to critique capitalism have you ever thought about maybe the reason why you're fat to begin with is because you're in a capitalistic structure you're fighting the thing that literally made you who you are to make money right and to create and you're also making money but like i, I think it's so interesting when these people talk about capitalism when it comes to staying thinner which is not the case uh the majority of america is overweight right can we agree on that so it obviously seems pretty lucrative to keep people fat it seems pretty lucrative that doordash uber eats and all these other apps are literally skyrocketing in profit right now i wonder why it could it be that it's convenience could it be that you have the ability to order food right away and that's keeping you fat instead of you like literally getting out of your app getting off your ass walking down the street and going to a supermarket and getting a couple things of water some meat some protein some whatever the fuck and cooking it yourself i get it Things are harder to cook, put together, than they are to just order on Uber Eats. You're paying an upcharge for it, of course, but you gotta understand when you get that food and all that stuff at the grocery store and you bring it back and you're creating quality, good, good concoctions, that stuff's gonna go a lot farther than that one meal that you bought for $15 at McDonald's, which by the way, what are you doing? Spending $15 on McDonald's on one meal? It's not worth it anymore. I don't care what anybody says. Maybe 10 years ago when McChickens were a dollar, might have been worth it. But nowadays, not worth it. What are McChickens now? Three bucks? Suck me off. I'm not spending, I'm not paying $3 for a McChicken. That's ridiculous. Okay? So I often hear these people say it's, it's capitalism that's trying to keep people thinner. I think it's the other way around. I think it's capitalism that's keeping you people fatter. It's very lucrative to keep you guys fat. It's very lucrative to keep you guys continuously buying this food. It's very lucrative to keep you guys in an unhealthy situation because you guys will, like, you're just, you're anchoring yourself so that way you can get more food and you don't leave the house. Have you ever thought about that? Create a body hierarchy that harms larger body disabled. If you're larger and you can't get a job, the reason why you can't get a job is because you're larger. Like, if you need to stand up for eight hours a day and do physical activity, that's going to be severely diminished. There are plenty of fat people out there that have, they complain about this. Like, I can't get a job. I don't know what's wrong with me. You know what's wrong with you. You're fat as fuck, bro. You can't even get out of bed in a timely manner. You think you're going to be able to stand up for eight hours? No, you're obviously not, dude. And it comes like this for anything. The amount of fat people that I've heard from uh, that have energy issues, that consistently are tired because their their body's hormone levels are so ir irregulated because it's like consistent. Like, if you're fat or you're overweight or obese, you will know this firsthand. You're body's hormone levels are just perpetually fucked it's like it's like waking up on the wrong side of the bed all the time so when you go to work you always feel like shit you always feel like there's something wrong with you and that's going to negatively affect your work experience why the fuck would i hire you when you're consistently depressed always complaining about your back problems always complaining about your knees always complaining about your headaches why do i want that i want somebody that's going to be upbeat that's going to be chipper that's going to be able to put in the work consistently that's what you want queer and people of color you just add in random just like minority groups I hope that clears things up. You didn't, and you made it worse. So. Great question. How is somebody's weight causing them to be oppressed in their workplace? 
Um, so like we just said earlier, if you're fat, you're probably going to have an inability to do your job to the same degree that somebody would have been able to do it if they were thinner, because in most jobs and most practices, you do need some level of physical activity in order to operate efficiently within your job. Not many people are literally working from home. And if you are working from home, good for you. That's amazing. That's fantastic. I hope that you continue to work from home and make fat stacks, but I hope you also go outside. It's really important to not spend literally 14 hours a day sitting at your chair, doing work from your computer, find a reason to leave your house, okay? Walk, please, try your hardest. You need a reason, please find one. And uh, so that could be an issue, that could be an issue, like not being able to get up properly or being perpetually depressed or just having very bad hormonal issues. Like these are gonna be things that are gonna continuously affect you, especially being fat, back problems as well too. Most recently, I was leaving the lobby of my work um, and the security guard, not an employee of my company, asked how much I weighed. And then when I went into fight or flight and like didn't respond and was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, he was like, is it 300 pounds or is it 500 pounds? I think that's a lie. I don't think, who is this security guard, bro? Why was he literally trying to roast you? Why, what is this guy, bro? Who, why would he do that? That's such a bizarre thing to say. Did this actually happen or are you just trying to come up with an excuse or you're just trying to come up with a reason? And this is like the most elaborate, random reason why you would come up with this shit. It's like Jay Bay saying that she got stuck in a fucking revolving door. What is going on? Um, he was like, is it 300 pounds or is it 500 pounds? It's obviously 500 pounds, come on. So that was sick. Another time I can think of distinct. And what did you do after that? Like, did you not like report that to HR or something like that? So he wasn't employed there. What What do you mean he wasn't employed there? You said that he wasn't employed by your company. So I'm guessing your company like occupies a section of the floor and he's probably just like the guy that like lets people in or out. What do you like? I, I would just love to know what these people are doing after this. Like, is there no consequences? This guy just like completely rashing your entire life. Like he just koofied the back of your neck and completely fucking roasted you and you just do nothing about it. I would love to know what that follow up was is when I worked with this girl who I thought was my friend, she wasn't my friend, but um, she introduced me to her aunt and we had a conference call where her aunt told me how she lost weight and then I like didn't lose weight because I was like, I don't like want to starve myself. Yeah, well, that's obvious. You don't need to starve yourself to lose weight. I wish these people would understand that when you're eating the way that you are in order to maintain whatever size this woman is. So like, let's say, for instance, hypothetically, this woman is 300 pounds. She is literally eating more calories than what she needs in a day. So she's doing the opposite of starving yourself, which is you're literally consuming way more. Okay, you're in a surplus right now. So when you say starving yourself, you have to at least acknowledge that what you're doing is not starving yourself. You're just putting yourself back to where you should be. If there was a teeter totter, okay, and you were on that teeter-totter you would be like this okay the teeter-totter is doing this and you you're trying to say you're trying to say this is what's going to happen if you lose weight no we want this we want the equal not this not this we want this we want to put you back at baseline you're eating too much so when you say i don't want to starve myself you're already doing that in the opposite direction and it's causing damage as well and then i like, like don't virtue signal and try to say like the person that lost weight that bettered themselves is wrong because they starved themselves they didn't do that most people that lose weight that are doing it in the right way are not starving themselves they're doing it in a calorie deficit which is already in an astronomical way do you know how many people that are eating 5,000 calories a day that would eat literally four thousand five hundred and lose weight by the way you only if you're a woman you need like two thousand calories on average okay now keep that in mind if i'm telling you if these people need forty five hundred calories to lose weight put that in perspective you're literally eating two thousand five hundred calories more and you're still losing weight you are putting yourself in a crazy situation it's okay to lower your calories by a little bit i didn't lose weight because i was like i don't like want to starve myself and then um, like unprompted. It's not unprompted. You said something really cringy right there, okay? Don't act like you didn't say something really, really, that's actually really insensitive. If somebody said, I lost weight and I did something to, I did something to, to make myself healthier and you go, well, I don't like want to like starve myself. You do understand that's really fucked up. Like people will literally look at that and go, well, that's really crazy that you would say that. Why do you think I was starving myself? Why are you acting like you're better than me? Because you didn't choose to starve yourself. What is this moral high ground game we're playing right now? Jesus Christ. So don't try to act like you didn't say something crazy. You did say something crazy. It was very backhanded. Like, I don't, like, want to starve myself. And then, um, like, unprompted, maybe a few weeks later, she dropped a book on my desk about how to lose weight. Yeah, it makes sense. You literally said something really, really crazy. So, yeah. Um, so, how can you say something and go, well, like, I don't want to, like, starve myself. And this fucking bitch, she, like, uh, dropped a book. Like, what the fuck? I can't even read. And then I returned it to her, True. like, three months later. After you read it three months later? Is that how long it takes you to walk to the desk? When I finally was confident enough to return it. <sighs> 
So you were confident enough to say that backhanded compliment, that backhanded compliment, right? But you weren't confident enough to, 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 to three months later, she probably thought you read it. And she said, did you read it? And yeah. I said, no. And she said, I could tell. Oh, damn. You got fucking koofied with that one. I can also just think of like, way more passive time i really love to like the two examples that she gave one of them was just unbelievable and she did nothing about it apparently and the other scenario she was like the direct cause of it like she said something and then the other person responded to it so like in the two scenarios you gave there like the second one was kind of justified like you, can you really say that's oppression can you imagine somebody saying that somebody <laughs> can you imagine somebody saying the oppression is i said something mean to somebody and then they said something mean to me okay cool yeah great oppression times where like being large and in charge is like not fun at work like um especially with size of swag like i'm fortunate enough to like fit in like a 2xl um and there's usually a few of those t-shirts around um but if you're bigger than a 2xl like you're fucked like you're not gonna get company swag um it's more expensive to order in different SKUs, and yeah like you won't be included you guys have very bizarre definitions of oppression. I don't think you guys understand what oppression is. This is a very crazy... That'd be like me going like, I'm oppressed, dude. Like, anytime I go into a store, there's like no clothes for me. I'm oppressed. Like, I'm just so small and I'm so pretty. Uh, nothing fits me. It's just what it is. I'm just so in shape that nothing fits. It's, is that really the level of oppression? Like, go back like 100 years ago and dudes were like, yeah, dude. Uh, I just... I can't even drink at water fountains. Like, I can't even go into stores. And this woman goes... I can't fit in clothes. You're really beautiful. I think the toughest thing about fat phobia in the workplace is that there's no laws really. What can we do to adjust those though? Like, what do we do? Like, okay, let's say hypothetically those things that you said were the things that are oppression, right? So like the guy saying that you were 500 pounds or 300 pounds and then the girl that you literally offended and then you were upset that some, that she said something back to you. Uh, what do we do uh, in those scenarios? Like you're at that point, you would have to like tax freedom of speech or some to some degree or another. Is that what you want to do? Like you just want to not like let people say what they want to say. Like you do realize that would also negatively affect you too. The face of depression right here, dude. The face of depression. Cake dawn is fuck too, bro. I think the toughest thing about fat phobia in the workplace is that there's no laws really against being fat phobic. It's not like there are laws like there are for gender discrimination or racial discrimination. Okay, so what do you want to do though? Like, what? First of all, okay, I'm not even gonna go ahead. Go ahead. Um, people can pretty much legally um be mean to you if you're fat. No, you can just go to HR. You can say some shit. Like this guy was like really offensive. He said some shit about me. I'm pretty sure HR will handle that. You're good. And there's really nothing that can be done about it. I just really hate the way she talks, dude. There's, like, nothing that can be done about it. Like, it's just what it is. Like, I don't know. Like, what am I supposed to do? I'm just, like, really oppressed. Why do you have to make everything last way longer on the speech, bro? Just say the fucking words, okay? I get it. You grew up in, like, California or something like that. You got the you got the valley girl accent, dude. But it's really cringe. I really hate people talking like this. Be me too if you're fat. And there's really nothing that can be done about it um it's like she's playing a guitar at the end of every 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 syllable so yeah i hope this helped everyone understand it's also really condescending too i don't know why this person like when she talks i feel like she's talking down to me like she knows more than me when she obviously doesn't know anything at all her brain is literally working at negative capacity right now and a little bit better what the fuck i'm talking about okay fat phobia harms everyone bro what happened what is going on with you, bro? Why does your skin on the body look like you're Latina, but on the face you look like you're sick, like you just threw up? It creates a culture. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey. Fat phobia harms everyone. It creates a culture where a group of people are allowed to be mistreated solely based on their appearance. I would just love to know what these people want to do. Like, you just don't like jokes or whatever. Are you not familiar with... Listen... Do you know how many times I've been in arguments with dudes and they said, uh, black guys that go, David, hey, get, hey, bro, hey, tell me about that meatloaf. Tell me about how you can't handle seasoning salt. Tell me about how you don't like the, oh, what, what kind of, what's your favorite flavor of, of hot sauce, David? Heinz ketchup? No, it's not Heinz ketchup. I'm a white dude, but I can handle spices, okay? I can. Um, and I'm gonna let you know right now, sometimes if you're gonna sit here and you're gonna critique me on my lack of, of seasoning salt and my hot sauce flavor being ketchup, well then guess what? Be prepared for some KFC jokes and watermelon jokes, dude. 
uh, as a black guy, it's okay to be racist every once in a while, okay, dude? It's it, the, the jokes, if you're okay with doing this, why are you not okay with that, okay? Obviously. So if somebody calls you fat, I get it. You don't like it. But dude, open yourself up to some criticism. It's okay. Don't stop taking yourself so seriously, dude. You guys literally make this shit your entire lives. And that mistreatment expands beyond more than just harmful words exchanged between true like when my friend was like hey david uh your favorite flavor of hot sauce is ketchup i literally cried for four hours like it was over for me i literally just sat on my bed i put my head to the pillow and i cried i just couldn't believe it i watched the notebook for five hours and then i beat my meat for 15 hours after that it was his fault it was that black guy's fault that perfectly big meated ginormous just like so much lubrication on the lips uh moisturized cocoa buttered man he said all that stuff to me and i cried he, i felt so bad strangers it impacts fat people's actual livelihood like their ability to be hired for example or the likelihood that they'll be found guilty of a crime what it, what do you mean the likelihood of them being guilty for a crime like what does that even mean i would love to know what they mean by that that's the job one makes a little sense, but the the crime one, why? What I have, I don't even, I couldn't even come up with an example what the crime would even be. Like, I think fat people would just be eliminated from crime statistics altogether if the crime was like really aerobic. Like, oh, he was seen running away from. Oh, get rid of that person right there. You said running, right? That person right there, no way they're running. <laughs> no way. Get rid of that guy in the end too. He seems like he's a little bit ex. You know, he came in with a little bit of chicken grease. Get rid of him too. Obviously, these guys are not going to be able to run away from the crime scene. So, like, get rid of these guys. Like, that's probably, like, what do you mean conviction of crime? I would love to know that because I can only see from the other side. And when we allow a culture to exist in this capacity. <laughs> not a good word for that one. The culture to exist in this capacity? Come on. I'm guilty of a crime. And when we allow a culture to exist in this capacity. When we allow a culture to be built on vitriol, it's not as containable as we think. It's not just fat people that experience that witness fat phobia. And that witnessing creates this subculture of fear. That's like somebody that's like somebody saying like a gay joke and then thinking that everybody is homophobic. That's like somebody saying like a hey bro, I bet you're I bet the, the only, you know, I bet that you like cocoa butter, dude. How many pairs of Jordans do you have? Hey, bro, you're black, right? Hey, hey, you're black. How many pairs of Tims do you have? How many times have you committed domestic violence? Like, you know what I'm saying? So you say that and it's how you think everybody's racist. Like you're what you're basically doing is that if somebody says something mean to you or you you have instances of somebody saying something mean to you, jokes or whatever, you're basically saying that because that happened to you one or two times that somehow everybody is guilty of that. That's crazy. People are afraid to be fat. Justifiably. Justifiably. There's literally nothing good about being fat, even baseline. You have tons of problems, and I don't have to go into them. They're just issues. Some people, it is their worst fear. because I they wonder what my worst fear is. I don't know, actually. I would have to think about that a little bit. I guess maybe like... Uh, maybe like really bad flavored deep fried food, like f deep fried food in general should never taste bad. So if you bit into something that was deep fried and it didn't taste good, that's probably really concerning. That food is probably going to kill you. Am I wrong? Like you can almost never fuck up deep fried food, right? Am I wrong? That shit, like if you took a bite out of a chicken wing and you bit into it and you're like, mm, oh, that's bad. You're probably just been poisoned, right? They know what's coming for them. And we also understand that nobody is safe. Any trait that you possess could at any time become the subject of public vitriol. So, like, what's the solution then? Like, do you guys just want to, like, not have free speech? Like, what do you guys want exactly, bro? Because you guys are literally actively fighting against people saying words that you just don't like. Which makes us all afraid because we understand, okay, today it's me, but tomorrow it could be you. I feel good about it, but then after I eat, it looks like this. Why? Oh, babe, because... I'm really afraid to open this door, but I'm going to do it. What if it was just... She's afraid to open the door because she can't fit through it. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. Fat. What if it wasn't your uterus? I want to invite you to consider what it might be like for somebody living in a fat body to see a video like that. I don't care. Uh, why do you think I care about that? I don't care. And you know what, dude? If you're doing anything in general, you're risking the... You're... If... Simply thinking is going to offend somebody. Just simply that. Somebody will be offended by you saying the most heartful shit. Like you saying, I think cats are great people. Somebody will go, what the fuck? Cats are actually disgusting and gross and just like 
I've never seen a cat wash his hands ever. Have you ever seen a cat wash his hands? I've never seen a cat wash his hands. That's deplorable activity. We should just get rid of cats. Cats are gross. Somebody's going to say that. So if you're upset that somebody made a video that you find not so funny, but like a lot of people did find funny, I don't care. Uh, what do you, why are you even like, you're just, you're just a Karen at that point. You're just really, really upset over it. Like some things, um, don't get me wrong. Some words are definitely worse than others. And some things are definitely worse than others in sense of like, not all speech is equal. I know a lot of people have this ideology of like all information is good information. No, sometimes some information is bad information. And sometimes even asking a question is bad. So, and I'll give you a really example. Like if somebody said, do we really even know how many people died in the Holocaust? The implication of that question is there's not a concrete idea of how many people died in the, in the, in the Holocaust. And so you're doubting the Holocaust, right? But there is, obviously, right? We know this. We There are tons of proof to evidence. Like, we have a good baseline of how many people were killed during the Holocaust. We have evidence to prove all this stuff. So you asking a question is actively a problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're basically denying it with, like, a get-out-of-jail-free card that you're just like, oh, no, I'm just asking a question. Sometimes simply asking a question could be harmful. And that's okay, right? I hope that the individual that hears that question is equipped enough to be able to handle that question. I think we should be leaving it up to the individual rather than just saying we should just get rid of those questions to begin with or get rid of these videos or get rid of these sediments like i understand not everything is going to be received better or worse depending on the person like for instance if alex jones says you know the sandy hook school shooting wasn't real right we know it was real but people that watch him now believe that it wasn't real so sometimes disinformation can be bad because there are a lot of people that just flat out believe things that people say because they like those people which is one of the reasons why i think when people start up videos and they go i'm just a guy on the internet like i'm just a dude bro like i don't like you should always take everything i say with like a grain of salt like i'm just a guy like i'm just a guy on the internet bro like who am i like if you're believing anything that i say you're just fucking weird i think that if you have an audience or people that watch you you have a response directly for the things that you say and if you're just gonna forgive the stuff that you say that's really bad that's really disgusting don't do that shit stop being a pussy just own your shit so when i see people saying this bullshit i always think i get it you're upset that this is a joke and it's towards you but on the off chance on the other side i don't give a fuck you got to get over this shit yourself. You're an adult. You're a grown woman. You should have the ability to look at that and go, it's not funny for me personally, but I can understand that it might be funny for a lot of people. Oh, well, scroll. That's what you got to do, okay? Or if you want to, you can open a dialogue or you can talk about it and you can do what you're doing right now and make yourself look actually dumb. But anyway, I actually like your outcome. It's, it's really good. And why we are so... And also, I'm going to keep it a buck with you right now. The fact that Marissa is literally reacting to your video should tell you everything that you need to know about how you're thinking about something. Quick to explain away parts of our body as being like natural or being an organ instead of being fat. What if that's natural too? What being fat is not natural, so that automatically doesn't make sense. It's not natural in any way. But if there's not anything inherently wrong with having a larger body? Well, there is something, but like, I get it. You're saying what ifs, but we know that that is like, okay, hear me out. If there was, if there was nothing wrong with being fat as a larger, or there was nothing wrong with being fat, then that video probably wouldn't be funny because that then at that point, it would just be like, you're just make, you're just saying something like, you know what I'm saying? That the entire idea of that joke being funny was because you're fat. So yes, but hypothetically, if being fat wasn't bad or like it was not a negative in any way, then I guess it'd be okay, I guess. I've gotten so many hate comments whenever I try to call out thin people and I really hesitate to do it again, but for me, it's not just my uterus. For people without uteruses... It's the gut. Yeah, it's the gut. Yeah. Well, even if you have a uterus, it's also just maybe the gut, too. Like, the big belly. Like, how many... Like, if you're, like, 350 and your gut's hanging down to your, you know, your kneecaps and you're going, it's my uterus. What? Damn, your uterus is long as hell. It's not just their uterus. And that's okay. As always, a huge disclaimer, this is not about this specific video. It's about the larger cultural conversation around body size and weight stigma. It's always something bigger than them, right? And then that they can always use that as an excuse. Thanks for listening. You're welcome. They call it glamorizing obesity when like plus size people are just, you know, existing. Because I'm going to call really like this is going to trigger me fucking super heavily because they call okay first of all if you're making videos on the internet okay and you're upset that somebody's critiquing you you can't just fame ignorance and go i'm just existing you're not just existing you're doing something very extreme you're making videos you're making content people are going to watch that content and there are going to be people that disagree with you about that content you can't just be like well i'm just existing i don't know why i'm getting hate that's dumb you're doing something you're literally setting up bear traps and you're stepping in your own bear trap and you're going why is there a bear trap why are you here in the bear trap valley why are you doing this shit why are you upset by stepping in the bear trap that you you just created 
Okay, whatever. Because they've built a system that is to value thinner bodies, and if- I guess this video is just all about systemic oppression. I don't fucking know, dude. These people, like, it always kind of ends up being that way. And I've always said, like, to be really careful around people that always, like, don't get me wrong. There are times and scenarios where systemic oppression does happen, right? We know this, obviously. Jim Crow, redlining, things like this exist. Things happen. I get it, right? But- Whenever somebody uses this shit and they, they, they fame ignorance so goddamn hard, it's like a guy, it's like a black guy running a red light and gets pulled over and goes systemic oppression. Like, you know, what I'm talking about like this. That's what this is. You, you can't you can't claim systemic oppression if you actually did something wrong. You can't sit there and say this is the problem, not me when you did it wrong. That's not how that works. So when, whenever, you, whenever you're around somebody and they always have a tendency of going, it's not my fault, it's this, it's this, it's this. Be careful around these people because they're externalizing their issues and they're never gonna actually solve their problems. This is a person of no growth, okay? Like, I'm not saying to take accountability for everything because if it's not your fault, it's not your fault. But you should most definitely be able to critically think and understand that maybe things are your fault you know, valuing thinner bodies means that they get access to the happiness and the excitement and all the love um, while actively oppressing the bigger ones. Right? I just want to know what they mean by oppressing, dude. Like, this is the second time I've heard this word, oppressing bigger body people. And I just really want to know what you mean by oppressing bigger body people. Do you mean, do you, do you consider gravity to be oppressing bigger body people? Like, you ever have a gripe with God? Like, you're just sitting there flipping off the fucking sky because it's like, this fucking gravity is hurting my kneecaps and I'm 550, bro. How dare you make this double dish, double, di double dozen fucking chocolate chip cookie donut. As good as you did, God, are oh, you fucking terrible, disgusting? How could you do this to me? Like, it's basically what I'm hearing when you guys say oppressing bigger body people. Like, what is, what is it? What is it, dude? What is it? Is it stairs? Okay, whatever. Right. But when we see that fat people can also find love, find happiness, enjoy life. Like I have no problem, by the way, with any fat people enjoying their life. But tendency, the tendency of them saying this is basically... Like, I'm not saying you can't do it, but it's almost kind of like, why would you want to do it? Knowing that it's going to be at a decreased capacity. So like, when you're thinner, you have a tendency of enjoying life more compared to a fat person because you don't have to deal with all the inadequacies of being fat. So like joint problems, heart issues, high blood pressure, maybe just the fact that stairs exist, the fact that you have to walk places, like things like that are gonna be inherently very, very, very difficult for you compared to a thinner person because you're not pushing double or triple the amount of weight up a stairs or down the street. So these things are gonna be very easy to assess. Uh, it's fine that you wanna find love or live your life as a fat person. That's great, I'm happy that you could do that, but it'd be very ignorant to sit there and assume that the reason why your life is hard is because of society when you're literally putting it upon yourself. Like truly find community in a world which is rigged against us wow. and is actively oppressing us. Well, it's just too easy for these people. It's, it's just too easy to blame everything on everybody else. And the system doesn't work anymore. What is it? What do you mean by the system doesn't work anymore? Like what, what do you, what do you mean? Like these people never have an example. They never talk about why, why this is like, what is happening exactly. It would be great if you can have a, I, I can have an idea of what you're talking about, some context, dude, some nuance, because like, I have no idea what you're talking about here. Like, when you say the world doesn't work anymore, what does that mean? What? Like, in the bracket of what? They don't have the carrot of uh, happiness can only be achieved if you're thinner, because we can find it when we're fatter as well. So the system no longer works, right? No, it's always worked like that if you want to be fatter. That's like saying like people with no legs can't find happiness. Of course they can find happiness. It might be like, it might be harder for them because most people are not, like if you're talking about love, right? Most people are not attracted to people without legs, but if you can find somebody that's attracted to you without legs, that's great, that's awesome. But if you're fatter and you're complaining that you can't find love, then I don't know what to tell you other than most people are not attracted to fat people. And sure, you can always just say, well, the reason why fat people are not, the reason why fat people are not attractive is because society, you could say that as well, but you know, that's getting you nowhere. You're just basically just taking away all your accountability and it's actually not solving the problem because you're just going to continue to live in your fat body and you don't see it as an issue to lose weight because it's actually not the reason why you need to lose weight. It's just a problem that society has. So you are actively hurting yourself by saying this shit and everybody else too. And that's why they undermine it by using this phrase, glamorizing obesity vilifying us for just existing you're not just existing okay like if it was just a fat person walking down the street nobody has a problem with that person nobody's saying anything about that person you might have your thoughts in your head you might say something to your friend but overall that person is living their life you on the other hand if you're making videos on the internet you can't just say you're just existing that is a outrageous claim you're not just existing you're making very very extreme content on the internet and now you're upset that people are critiquing it shut up stop acting like that you're not fucking innocent because we are existing no take we out of this you are not we you are the 
You are not the mind. You are you are the minority. Okay, you are the extreme. You're not you're not the norm. You are the extreme. You are an individual making content on the internet. You can't keep putting this we. And not only that, we're not just existing. We're thriving, and they cannot stand that we can. They cannot stand that we're beating the system. Yeah, I don't care. It's fine. Great. I'm happy you're living your best life. Fat people are allowed to take up space in the world. Sure. And if glamorizing obesity means that I'm glamorizing a life where you can find happiness and excitement and enjoyment and love and community. That's not what you're doing though. When we say you're, glorif you're, you're glorifying obesity, we're not saying that you're finding love, enjoyment and community and all this other stuff. We're talking about the videos you're creating. We're talking about how you believe that being fat is not a problem. We, we're talking about these issues right now. So uh, maybe you should probably, like, I get it. It's like very... It's very easy for this individual to talk about this particularly because they have to gaslight people into thinking that that's the reason why they actually are upset when that's not the reason why we're upset. We are upset because you're making very extreme content on the internet that is obviously incorrect and people are going to critique you for that. And then you sit there and try to gaslight people into thinking that the reason why we're actually upset is because you're married or you're going to get married and you found love with somebody. Nobody gives a fuck about that. Like, I don't care that you're married. I don't care that you found love. Like, that's great. I'm happy for you. But you're saying really wild shit on the internet. That's the issue. You're not fucking innocent. Stop crying. Stop trying to gaslight like people into thinking that we're the crazy ones you're literally the insane ones here like you're literally out here like the fact is that you had to gaslight you have to come up with a random excuse to try to justify your claim because you know that we're right is crazy that should really like that should open your eyes but it's not going to but regardless guys we're gonna end the video here i hope everybody enjoyed today's video if you did i'd appreciate if everybody leave a like comment subscribe sharing the video all those things i'd appreciate tremendously if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now leave it down below by typing in koala they deserve love they do deserve love they're a little bit useless they're a little bit dumb um they're like hamsters like why do people have hamsters as pets i don't know they seem stupid they don't do shit they just kind of like look at you sometimes and die randomly right isn't that what they do like I've, i remember when i was a kid and i grew up i literally had a hamster that just died it just died it was just like, i woke up one day and it was just dead and i asked my mom i was like what is that what happened to it and they were like yeah i just died I was like can you imagine even having that as an excuse same thing with like really really small dogs like i remember i knew this girl and she was like when i was a kid i had a uh, chihuahua my dad came home from work one day and he opened the door and he didn't see it and he stepped on it and it died and i'm just thinking like you your dog died because somebody stepped on it that's crazy how fucking what was the durability settings on your dog bro i've had cats before where i accidentally stepped on my cat because i didn't know where i was looking or I, like i had something in front of me and i stepped on it by accident not on purpose and my cat was fine like good gg right but your dog died, dude? Get a better fucking dog, okay? That shit's terrible. Don't get dogs that die after you step on them one time. That's crazy, dude. Can you imagine stepping on them twice? Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, you're a beautiful person. You're a specimen of a human being. I really love your hair today. That's a really outrageously amazing set of hair you have. That is a good follicles upon your head. Mm -mm -mm. Tasty, beautiful, and lubricated at that. It smells really good, too. Is that... <laughs> What kind of shampoo is that? No shampoo, huh? No shampoo? You don't need shampoo. Your hair smells good regardless. Your eyebrows, delectable. Your, 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 your shoulder, mmm, tasty. Can I suck on it for 45 minutes? Please let me know. Anyway, guys, social media will be linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day.